Everybody, welcome to Apocalypse Rising. Thanks for tuning in. I know it's been a long time since I made one of these. I, I don't even know if I can call it a video anymore. It's, it's kind of more like a podcast these days. But uh, I feel like we've kind of lost focus a little bit just in terms of what we've been paying attention to, especially in the news and just what's going on around us in the world. Uh, right now, you know, if you, I guess, polled, a bunch of people most likely they would say that their concerns are the economy um, the presidential race um, societal unrest you know blm all that stuff and, and the virus those are going to be at the very top of the list and that's that's warranted you know we're going through a lot right now when it comes to that stuff i personally think we'll make it through it we'll overcome and yeah it might get bumpy in the meantime but these are things that we've overcome in the past and what's waiting for us, and it's not waiting for us, let's just be honest, but what's coming around the bend here that's going to be right in our face is climate change. Regardless if you're a denier, if you think it's a hoax, it doesn't matter. It's here and it's just going to keep accelerating. So what I thought I'd focus on today, I just want to try to keep my my videos or whatever you want to call these shorter uh, and more to the point. So today I'm just going to focus on one article that I found uh, I actually found this on my cell phone, and of course, obviously with your cell phones and stuff, it's going to give you information that it thinks you want to see. So I get a lot of climate change stuff. I get a lot of virus stuff, a lot of political stuff and economic stuff, but I also get cool things, you know, like aquarium stuff and computer stuff and, and things that are my hobbies, car things. But this came up today and it really caught my attention because I had done a video about four years ago that was talking about, um, you know, the ice melting and releasing greenhouse gas emissions and it, it, these unexpected anomalies that scientists were talking about in terms of methane release and where it was coming from. And here I'm finding an article that really basically summarizes exactly what I was saying. And that's that we're already in this positive feedback loop where the ice is melting to such a degree that methane is just going into the atmosphere faster and faster and in more and more large you know quantities to the point where this feedback loop is the next phase in this super accelerated feedback loop that's going to take place within the next 10 10 years or so and really show us uh, our if we have resilience you know it's going to test our resiliency as a species so this one here it's called sleeping giant arctic methane deposits starting to release scientists find well what do you mean starting to release it's been releasing and that's why they're just now noticing how much it's releasing i think at least that's my opinion so um it, it says here that scientists have found evidence that frozen methane deposits in the arctic ocean known as the sleeping giants of the carbon cycle have started to be released over a large area of the continental slope off the east siberian coast the Guardian can reveal. So basically what they're saying here is that the ice is melting and this sleeping giant of the carbon cycle is, is getting awoken, if you will. And all this, you know, methane is just coming out of the frozen ice. Uh, and so what it says here is that high levels of the potent greenhouse gas have been detected down to a depth of 350 meters prompting concern among researchers that new climate feedback loop may have been triggered that could accelerate the pace of global heating. I mean, this is a no-brainer. It, it's been doing that. Now it's to the point where it's obvious, you know. They can't say, well, this methane is going into the atmosphere and we don't really know why and where it's coming from and blah, blah, blah. No, clearly now there's no denying that it's coming from all the melting ice. Um and so basically methane has a warming effect 80 times stronger than carbon dioxide over 20 years. So you can see right there that that's just huge. You could stop driving cars. You could stop 
burning coal. You could stop all that stuff. And if methane is coming out of the ice that's melting, that's 80 times stronger than the carbon dioxide the, those other things are putting out. So we're past that point of no return. Do you, if you want to solve something like this, now you're going to have to figure out how to reverse what we've done. It's no longer, oh, if we just reduce what we're doing. Obviously, we have to do that anyway for in the future after we've removed what we've done or reversed what we've done up to this point, then we don't get back into that situation. Um, however, if they figure out how to just take it out of the atmosphere and reverse what we've already been doing, then we could essentially just keep doing what we're doing while that mechanism is reversing uh, what we're doing in terms of putting out greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. So, you know, there this is becoming more and more daunting of a task for science to, to find a solution before it, it does turn into an existential crisis uh, for humanity, which in my personal opinion, it's already there. And we're so distracted right now by all this other stuff. Once the, you know, however you want to say the smoke clears or whatever, uh, we're going to be looking climate change square in the eye and, and, wondering if we're going to be able to overcome that. And uh, personally, I don't think we can at this point. I think it's too late and we're going to reap the consequences of number one, ignoring it. Number two, the reason that we got here in the first place was uh, primarily just because of selfishness and greed in all reality. And then the number one reason is population. You can never take that out of the equation. The larger the population grows, the more pollution occurs and therefore you have a bigger negative effect on the planet and our environment and the ecosystem in general. Uh, you know, this is just one, one part of it. Um, it says in this article here that at this moment, there is unlikely to be any major impact on global warming. But the point is that this process has now been triggered. I don't know about that. I feel like it's, it's been triggered, you know, and this is just us recognizing that it's happening. And to look and, and see some of the other things that are going on, um, they, they say that the Arctic ice hasn't started to freeze yet. And it's, this has been the latest in the season that that's happened since like 1880. Um, and so the ice isn't freezing. And now we've got methane being triggered from the ice melting. This is like a double whammy. And you're getting 100 degrees in the Arctic now, 100 degrees. It's only supposed to be like 40, maybe 60 tops at its hottest, and it's getting up to 100 degrees. We're having, I think it's 5 degrees Celsius on average hotter temperatures in the Arctic. If we had a general 5 degrees Celsius increase over the entire planet, we would be in deep, deep trouble, but it's almost like a, a canary in the coal mine right now. The Arctic is saying, look, this is what the future is going to hold because it's melting and it's going to have less of an ability to, to cool down the planet. And before you know it, it's not going to be that there's unlikely to be any major impact on global warming. It's going to be like, wow, how do we fix this? And can we fix it at all? Um, and so, I mean, they're, they're doing multi-year international shelf studies and expeditions, and they're saying that their findings are um, preliminary, and the scale of methane release will not be confirmed until they return. So even as we read this article, to sit here and say that, oh, it's not going to have a major impact on global warming, but nothing has even been confirmed, uh, is, is kind of misleading, in my opinion. Um, and really the Arctic right here, it says the Arctic is considered ground zero in the debate about the vulnerability of frozen methane deposits in the ocean. I read another article that said scientists have now discovered that even at the deepest depths of the oceans, it's starting to, to heat up. And that's really what we don't want. You know, there's some argument now coming out about the Permian extinction, which I've talked about in the past and how that occurred. And a lot of people believe that it, it just got so hot um, because of, of like volcanic eruptions, putting CO2 uh, into the atmosphere and a cascading effect, you know, of, of climate change to the point where the frozen methane at the bottom of the ocean melted and released all this methane into the atmosphere and basically just turned the planet into a hothouse and 
pretty much wiped a lot, like 96% of species off the planet. And then there was kind of like a re reset. And they're saying, oh, well, this is just part of the geological cycle. And that's how new species come about. Yeah, we, yeah, that's pretty obvious. That's, that's obvious. And so what we're doing is we're, we're entering into another one of those phases. Now, what comes after that? Who knows? Are humans still here? Who knows? But the point is that we're entering into one of those phases. As a matter of fact, I believe we're in it now. And we're like frogs in a boiling pot to a certain extent, we've been in it for the last 50 years or so to where um, if we didn't make drastic measures uh, a long time ago, that there's no really way to avoid it unless science just comes through in spades and, and kind of fixes this. So, I mean, there's still a chance that that happens, but at the moment, this is getting really out of control. Uh, it says the discovery of potentially destabilized slope frozen methane raises concerns that a new tipping point has been reached that could increase the speed of global heating. Well, that's that's what's happening. It's not uh, whether or not we're almost there, we're on the brink. No, we're, we're in it. And, and once methane starts being released, just like I said four years ago, it was being released four years ago. And now we're talking about it four years later to the point where um, the Arctic's not refreezing when it's supposed to. It's getting up to 100 degrees. And now they're talking about uh, you know, this sleeping monster or whatever of methane is just going to come out of the ocean and start raising the, the overall global temperatures. And then you're just going to have uh, the effects from that. Let's just take, for example, what's happened over the past three or four years with fires. I mean, the Amazon is burning down. Australia's burning down. We all have seen what happened in California this year. It's still happening. Another fire in California. Colorado's having the biggest fires they've ever had you know, the, the forests are just burning down. Methane is being released into the atmosphere. What What is there now to say that we might be in this or, or there, there may be an issue in the future in 30 years? No, we're in the shit now. And if we don't realize that and do something about it quickly, we're, we're done for way sooner than people imagined. These are the kind of things that happen when they go, oh, well, we didn't consider that when we were doing our graphs or our data analysis, those were outlier situations that are now going to become the actual situations that occur. And I mean, this is just one article amongst many uh, that, that talks about it. So uh, what they're saying here is for the second year in a row, um, their team has found crater like pockmarks in the shallower parts of the Laptev Sea and East Siberian Sea that are discharging bubble jets of methane, which is reaching the sea surface at levels tens to hundreds of times higher than normal. Oh, but it might not be a big deal. May maybe it's a problem. Uh, they're already finding, and this is on the shallower parts. There, they said that there's more blobs, these these heat blobs, I guess you could call them. Uh, in the ocean now than there's ever been. And they're basically just these big, huge dead zones of, of heat that, that make storms stronger and just kill all kinds of sea life along the way. And not only that, they get up underneath the, the ice shelves and, and all of this Arctic ice and even Antarctica, they get up underneath the continent and they heat up the ice to the point where it's, it's increasing the melting. So we're just seeing the shallower parts. Once the deeper parts, which are becoming exposed now, start melting, you're not just going to have levels tens to hundreds of times higher than normal. It's going to be thousands to hundreds of thousands of times higher than normal. And obviously this is just in layman terms. I'm not a scientist, but if the shallow jets are putting out uh, tens to hundreds of times higher, once the thicker ice starts melting, it's going to be way more than that. Um, temperatures in Siberia were five degrees Celsius higher than average. So like I said, this is coming up in a lot of the articles I'm reading. Five Celsius, five Celsius, five Celsius. We're supposed to keep the planet under 1.5 Celsius average um, in the next 10 years is our goal. And Siberia in the Arctic is already five degrees Celsius higher than average. So that's at least 600 times more likely to be human-caused emissions of carbon dioxide and methane. Well, it doesn't even matter at this point because now this, this bubbling discharge of methane from melting uh, Siberia, Siberian ice, is just pumping this stuff out into the atmosphere now. 
So that's basically what this article goes over. And it's just another example of what's going on with the planet here. And, and if we're going to survive this, that we need to act now. We needed to act a long time ago, but we need to stop debating whether or not this is a thing. Who cares what's causing it or, or anything like that? Because at this point, we need to reverse what's already been done. Forget about slowing down what we do in the future. That's just going to come with it. But we need to reverse what's already been done because this stuff isn't going to stop happening if we just all of a sudden stop emitting greenhouse gases because now the planet is doing that on its own. And unless we can stop the planet from emitting these gases, um, you know, we're, we're in really big trouble. So... Anyway, that's all I have to say about this. I hope everybody's doing well and staying safe. I know this is a super crazy time. And um, I, I built a new computer finally, so I'm more doing this just to kind of mess around with my computer. But I did see that article and thought, boy, this is, this is coming to fruition faster than people imagine. And I guess it, I feel like it's my duty just to bring it to the forefront. So... Thanks for tuning in. Fucker right in the pussy.